What's up, Final Fantasy fam? Welcome back to another guide, this time covering Zodiac Extreme. So if you're looking for something hectic, be sure to buckle up and let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to notice on our screen is the way we have placed our markers are simply just a nice little corners of the room with the spaces in between each corner of the room and leaving the center of the room basically open just for visibility and it's still pretty easy just to be like go to unmarked or go here go here etc but if you really want to make the fight simple if one person actually knows the fight you can just mark that person as we did in our group here and just follow them around for the entire thing blindly because zodiac is one of those fights where there's not really a spread mechanic for you to worry about so you could just blindly follow someone along the entire way and pretty much be successful there's only one real part where a death can cause a wipe and we'll cover that as we get on later in the video but as we start our fight here you're going to notice we're going to gravitate a little bit towards our front corner of the room around this four marker we placed this is for a couple of reasons now the first is going to be this ability zodiac's casting right now on us will drop us all down to one hp so healer panic Healer panic, everyone top each other off, spread, you know, stack up, do AoEs, all the good stuff. And then once you guys get topped up so you don't die, we are now going to have Phoenix's spawn. Now, Phoenixes are a new type of ad you did not see on normal. They cause a donut around them. So you basically just want to stand underneath these guys. At the same time, you notice we have this multiple arrow stack mechanic, means a multiple hits about to happen. So it's essentially this purple beam that will bounce over our heads from player to player, but it's shared. So we just need to stay close together as it bounces over each of our heads, and we're going to split all that damage. Right here, you just saw this tank buster mechanic. Now, in the top corner of my screen, there is a purple debuff ticking down from 30 seconds. This means, basically, if I have this debuff from the tank buster and Zodiac hits me, I'm more or less dead. So it is a simple tank swap mechanic that you guys need to worry about. As far as damage is concerned, you don't really need to use too much beyond like a 30% here. And if your co-tank happens to be dead, you can immunity to sort of delay the one shot from happening to you, giving them enough time to get rezzed and taunt up. The shapes that happened right after there, you guys kind of know what those are, but we'll see a little bit more of those later. Here we have the phoenixes spawning, meaning a donut. But you also see Zodiac up here in the front corner of the room. So here's our safe donuts. You see a meteor in the uh, top top area of the map up here fallen from that dog. But Zodiac's about to do a line attack right here. Now this line attack will cut that area of the Phoenix in half. If you guys saw that right there. Let's go ahead and back up just a little bit. So here's this Phoenix. And right there. So... As you can see, Zodiac cuts our Phoenix circle in half. If you happen to get clipped by that, it is a knockback. So knockback immunities can work. You will still take damage from the ability, but uh, this is just something I really wanted to uh, rewind real quick and just point out to you guys. So all in all, a couple things that can overlap that are a little hectic in the fight, but um, moving forward, Zodiac's at 80% here. Starting to put all of our dots and stuff on the boss. Nice little AoE. This is a healer AoE that people need to pay attention to. There's now a new debuff, about 10 seconds long on the corner of my uh, mini-map up here. That is a bleed. Bleed ticks, nah, not super hard, but it is pretty, you know, noticeable. You also get taken down to like 30%, or by 30% HP, so just make sure you guys heal that back up. And now the fun starts. As we see, pause, I got little arrows. These little arrows are indicating that the platform is going to shift. So... What I mean by that is you got, you're going to be picked up just like normal. Platform's going to rotate around. The snakes that are spawned will also rotate with this platform. So these beams are going to change from being parallel here to being vertical and blasting down this way. That shape that is back there, that square, does not move. It'll stay right there. So that half of the platform is just going to sit there. Don't worry about it. We're already on safe half. Good. So let's stack right here. We're going to predict that this is about where the snakes are going to be. So they're going to get pick us up here. Snakes are going to rotate a little bit, go vertical, and we are in the safe zone for this one. So overall, just something to pay attention to. We have another tank buster mechanic right here. Obviously on the co-tank, I'm now going to taunt off of him so he doesn't get one shot. And what's happening next? All right, we see some snakes spawning in that top front corner there. This mechanic right here, 
If you do not pay attention to anything else in the fight, this cast bar. Akedia, Adikia, K. This A word. If you see this A word pop up on his cast bar, just basically you want to pay attention to either be forward or backwards from him. It's a, it's a mechanic where he basically punches the ground on the platform, causing two giant half circles uh, to spawn, you know, explosions. So you want to be either in front of those or behind those. There was also that snake that happened right there, which went off around the same time right here. So you see our two little half circles forming with the line from the snake. So there's this nice little bitty triangle we get to stand in for a safe zone. If you guys take a Vuln, don't worry too much about it. Just try to get hit by both the mechanics at the same time. You should live. Now, this mechanic right here. This is the most important mechanic of the fight. These four orbs will spawn. Now, this is the part where if somebody is dead, I would recommend wiping and just starting over. But these four orbs will spawn, and the longer they are all up here, the more Zodiac's power will increase. If he gets to 100, you're dead. It's a wipe. So that's why I say if somebody's dead, just kind of wipe it. This is your damage benchmark for the fight. As you're trying to nuke these down, shapes will spawn in the front of the room here. Green indicates still just the straight lines. You also have the triangles, which are your cones. And then occasionally you will see the square, which is the half of the platforms. The way we kind of chose to do this a little bit was to split our damage up a little bit. The melee kind of took the ones that were close to the shape so they could run back in case it was a triangle and then range sort of nuke to the farther back ones. So here's our triangles and stuff. We're going to go hug that area a little bit as you see my safe little zone right here that we were in. Go back to nuking these. Start running a little bit farther out. New shapes have spawned. We now need to go back up in here and hug this little safe spot in the triangle. And as you get to that last purple circle, I would say, go for it. Just nuke it, because the second it dies, all those shapes despawn. And honestly, running up to those shapes and then running back, power can get a little dicey up and around the 90s. So it can be a pretty close call, depending on what your damage looks like. Right here, his power hit uh, took us down, you know, about 50% life there. Obviously, like I said, if it hits 100, you're dead. It's a one shot. So... Just something to keep in mind. Probably don't need to cool down. There should be more than enough time to top people up before this happens. I would save them for a few things later on in the fight. Here, an astral eclipse. That means stars. So once again, these stars are going to be spawning around the room, falling in the order that they happen to pop up in. And we are going to some new safe locations here. Let's see. Where's he going? He's porting over here. So we want to pay attention to him. Star number one, star number two. Shapes are now forming over there as we are running to this last third spot. The middle spawned first, so it's going to go off first. Nice couple of us got clipped here. Second set are going to go off. But, you know, even though we all took some bone stacks, a couple people died. Not a big deal. Like I said, we've already passed the damage benchmark for the fight. And as far as limit breaks go, you're going to get a three limit break and then a one limit break later on. So don't worry too much about damage. Here we have our rotating platform once again. Now, if you'll see the mistake that I made right here. Now, I thought I had a five head. Thought I was doing some big plays. Did not happen. You got this fire line that's now going to rotate away from me. I caught that part. So it's going to rotate away from me towards my other party members. They're already on the other half of where this line will end up. So as it rotates to them, they're still safe. But I'm also going to lose my nice little Phoenix Donut that's right here with me, and it will end up over by them. So now they're going to end up inside their little safe donut, away from the other half of the fire line, and they're going to be good. But that means I get a nice little friend to come visit me, little doggo here. We're going to have a little catch, play ball. Oh, look at that. He loves playing ball. I'm going to go ahead and super bowl eye just so I don't die to that. Take my nice second Vuln stack. You know, like I said, guys, if you're a tank, you can probably survive with three vulnerability stacks. Not that I would know that from personal experiences or anything, but, you know, it, as long as you have cooldowns, you know, especially because you're swapping between main tank and off tank, is really not a, uh, a whole lot to worry about in this fight. Again, red beam, we know that's half circle. Moving to a corner here, he's going to beam down the center of the room. If you don't feel like you're going to make it, again, throw that, you know, knockback immunity You'll still take the damage, you just won't get blown off the platform. So it's definitely a lot better to risk it that way than 
you know, go sailing off the edge. Now, we've reached half point in the fight, so there's a couple more things going to happen, a little bit more hectic, but overall it won't be too terrible to follow, hopefully. Phoenixes, once again, donuts. Fire lines are going to rotate with the arrows. So we're going to go ahead and move up here by this phoenix. Now something else, you'll notice that some of us are actually in different spots of the phoenix. Now, some of us are correct, and some of us are wrong. As this resolves here, you have this fire line rotating away from us. We're going to get a safe little phoenix donut. But some of us did not catch the snake. So, again, those snake lines that are going to come through. We essentially had a donut mechanic from the phoenix. Fire line cut that donut in half. So only half of that phoenix was safe. But this snake right here is going to cut that in half. So we now only have a quarter of that phoenix, which is safe. So not that I have a third Voln stack or anything, but, you know, it's possible to survive if you're a tank. So don't stress too much, guys. Right after this mechanic, though, you will see we have this stacking mechanic. So I did throw a Heart of Light right here. Tanks, definitely on stuff that overlaps like this, I would strongly suggest throwing a tank cooldown. Or if you are if you have a ranged physical, throw something in there. I think our Red Mage threw their cooldown in there. Just help people out, especially with Vuln stacks. Some things can hit a little bit harder, be a little more hectic. You'll also notice that we did get our LB3 right here. So I think we're going to go ahead and pop that pretty soon. Right as we dodge these shapes that are spawning. We had a triangle and then two half, half platforms. So really nothing major going on right there. So as we start to dodge those, he's now going to punch the platform. We are going to move up a little bit, be away from both halves of those exploding circles that he caused. And we held on to LB3 apparently for a little bit too long. But nevertheless, I think you can still get a 3 and a 1 even if you hold it for a little bit. I think I think one of the reasons why some people do hold it for that is because if you happen to LB and then he goes immune for the star phase, you pretty much just lose your LB. So that might have been why we delayed it on this particular pull. Again, resolving star mechanics, two safe spots to pick between each. So we're going to go ahead and move to the middle here. Move over here. And then you saw Zodiac leave point of, uh, point of view here, line of sight. I mean, so he's going over, do his nice little line attack, push somebody off platform maybe. Nope, we're all safe. Good. All right, so here we go. Let's pop that LB3. There we go. There's our ninja. Tank buster happening. Again, I'm going to pull off of him. Tank swap. And uh, we're back to no vulnerabilities, guys. So star phase is a really good spot to drop those vulns. Get a nice little refresh. So it's, it's definitely an easy fight when it comes to uh, forgiveness, for sure. Purple beam. You know what that means? Triangle attack over here. So we're going to want to get close to that. We also have snakes and now a fire line again. So again, arrows pointing away from us, fire line moving that direction away from us. We need to make sure that we are not going to get clipped by these snakes, though. Luckily, there is no phoenix or dogs we have to really worry about. So we can just go right up in this corner. But right after that did happen, you'll notice we'd started dropping three little exploding circles under us, as well as a stack mechanic happening. So while there's not some hectic things, you're now getting a couple new things to deal with. Again, pop some defensives, red mage, you know, or tank cooldowns, physical range cooldowns, whatever you guys got, just in case somebody did take a vulnerability, which I don't know how, but uh, we all came out unscathed from this. So we had our big brain pants on. Uh, moving on, we see our shapes forming in front of us there. Now, if you see that middle one spawned first, so that's going to go off first, move into that new safe spot. Two new beams hit. Approaching 15% near the end of the fight on Zodiac. He's not really going to introduce anything new to us for the most part. So it's more or less just kind of repeating some of the things you already saw before. Half of the room pretty much going to get blasted. We saw that square. And we have our little dog over here. You see over here we have that fire line once again. So fire line is going to rotate over. We're already on the safe half as this fire line now rotates to us. So again, we are going to be on the safe side of it. The phoenix will then rotate under us. So we'll be in our donut, all safe and sound. Everyone's good. There we go. And that was not that bad. 
approaching near the end of the fight. Everyone's getting super excited. Are we going to see him out? Probably not. But, you know, let's see. So, where are we at? Another bleed attack. Now, that one happened right after some stuff. So, you saw everyone get down pretty low there, like 50, 30%. Plus, we got bleeds ticking. You know, at the end of the fight, everyone's drilling's going. We're all rushing. We're all going. Let's see what we got. We got a square, another square. What else is happening? Got a triangle. Let's go to the triangle. Then we're all safe. So we can pretty much sit up here for the rest of this. We're good. Squares away from us. No squares away from us. Triangle's going to blow away from us. He did move. So he's moving to that side. Oh, no. Everybody panic. Pop your arms link. Like I did right there, even though I'm not even close. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much Zodiac fight, guys. I mean, uh, some things happen a little fast. If you feel that uh, something needs a little bit more explaining, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. But, anyway, oh, no mount. But, uh... Happy mount farming, guys, and until next time, I'll see you later.